technology and livelihood education, bread and pastry production. Bread and Pastry Production, First Quarter, Lesson 1 Our topic is Basic Ingredients in Baking Knowledge on the different baking ingredients, its characteristic, and proper usage can be a great leaf for you to do baking successfully. Keeping basic ingredients in your pantry will enable you to bake anytime. The major ingredients in baking. The first major ingredient in baking is the flour. Flour is a finely ground meal obtained by grinding and milling cereal grains or other root crops. Flour is most commonly made from wheat and when the word flour is used without qualification, it is usually implies wheat flour. However, flour also can be made from other grasses and non-grain plants such as rye, barley, corn, rice, potatoes, and other foods. Wheat contains protein. When mixed with water, these proteins form as gluten. The more protein as flour has, the stronger the gluten strength. The classification of flour is based on the amount of protein. Protein determines the gluten strength of the flour. Gluten gives the dough its shape and form. The more protein a flour has, the stronger the gluten strength. Types of flour First is the bread flour. It has the highest amount of protein, around 12 to 14 percent. Thus, it has the strongest gluten strength. This flour is used for breads. It is creamy in color and is rather rough and granular. The high gluten content causes the bread to rise and it gives shapes and structure. It is also termed as hard flour. It is commonly used for yeast breads, any sturdy baked good where chew is desirable. Another type of flour is the all-purpose flour. All-purpose flour also termed as general purpose or family flour. It is made from a combination of bread and cake flour sources and has a medium gluten strength, around 12 to 11 percent. It is suitable for almost any baking purposes. The next type of flour is the cake flour sometimes called soft flour, as it is milled from soft white wheat. It is comparatively low in gluten, around 7 to 9 percent, and so results in a finer texture. It is described as the wheat because the products made from it are tender with delicate texture. It is good for making cakes and cookies where a tender and delicate texture is desired. The next type of flour is the self-rising flour, also known as self-raising flour. It has a gluten of 8.5 to 11 percent. It is a variety of white flour that has salt and baking powder already combined into it. This variety of flour can make quick work of simple recipes by combining three ingredients into one. The baking powder is also evenly distributed throughout the flour so it gives an even reliable rise to baked goods. It is best used for quick bread such as biscuits, muffins, pancakes, and scones. Hand test for flour strength. Small bakeries keep three white flours on hand. As a baker, you should be able to identify them by sight and by touch. The next major ingredient in baking is the sugar. Sugar is a sweet, soluble organic compound that belongs to the carbohydrate group of food. 
They are simplest to digest among all carbohydrates. Types of sugar The first type of sugar is the regular granulated sugar or also called white sugar. It is the sugar commonly found on the table at home. It is also known as table sugar or as refined sugar. The next type of sugar is the confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. It is a granulated sugar that has been pulverized. It is added with 3% cornstarch to prevent lumping and caking. It is frequently called confectioner sugar because it is used in making frostings and icings. Another type of sugar is the brown sugar. It contains caramel, mineral butter, and moisture. It is also contains small amount of molasses. It is often called soft sugar because of its moisture content. Its color may vary from light to dark brown. The following are the effects of sugar in baking. It increases dough development. It makes the color of the crust richer. It improves the nutritive value flavor and aroma of the product. It makes the bread more tender. It increases the volume of the loaf. It serves as a food for the yeast. It contributes to the moisture content of baked products, increasing its storing quality and acts as a creaming agent. The next ingredient is the egg. Eggs are considered a complete protein containing all the essential amino acids human use to build other proteins needed by the body. Both the yolk and the egg white contains protein, so whole eggs or their separated components may be used to set liquids. They represent almost 50% of the total cost of any baked products. Thus, consider the baking ingredients with the highest cost or expense. Egg is considered as the backbone of many baked goods and contribute to its structure. Egg also provides steam for leavening and moisture for starch. Egg represents almost 50% of the total cost of the baked product, thus consider the baking ingredients with the highest cost or expense. Egg yolks add moisturizing fat and helps emulsify the butter giving the baked good a smooth and creamy texture. The egg white acts as a strengthener. There are substitutes for fresh eggs, but they do alter the recipe. Uses of egg in baking. Eggs as well as flour are the structural ingredients in baking. Eggs provide leavening, add color, texture, flavor, and richness to the butter. It also acts as a stabilizer in mixture that inherently want to separate into two parts, like oil and water. They are very important in helping to bind all the other ingredients together. Beaten eggs are used as leavening agents as they incorporate air into the butter, which will expand in the oven and cause the cake to rise. Eggs are used as thickening agent. Eggs washes are brushed on many baked goods to create a golden shiny top. The egg white provides luster and the egg yolk color. Egg whites are used to make meringue. The next ingredient is the shortening. Shortening is any pot which when added to flour mixture increases tenderness. This is done by preventing the sticking of gluten strands while mixing so that the gluten is shortened and makes the product tender. The taste of the baked product depends greatly on the flavor of the shortening. Here are some examples of shortening. First is the oil. Oil made from plant products such as corn, 
cotton seeds, soybeans, peanuts, and other sources. As a rule, you can substitute oil for melted shortening. Among produced oils, corn oil and vegetable oils are commonly used in baking. Unless specified in the recipe, olive oil should not be used in baking. The next example of shortening is the butter. It is made of fatty milk proteins. It contains around 80 to 85% fat, 10 to 15% water, and 5% milk solids. When used in baking, it contributes flavor and tenderness. Butter remains solid when refrigerated, but softens to a spreadable consistency at room temperature and melts to a thin liquid consistency with a temperature of 32 to 35 degrees Celsius. The next example of shortening is the margarine. It is made from hydrogenated vegetable oil. It contains 80 to 85 percent fat, 10 to 15 percent water, and 5 percent salt. The hydrogenation process makes oil a solid. The next example of shortening is the lard. It is made of fat from pork. Some people prefer lard to other fats for making pie crust and biscuits because it gives a flakier texture. The next example of shortening is the cocoa butter. The ivory-colored natural fat of the cocoa beans extracted during the manufacture of chocolate and cocoa powder. It gives chocolate its creamy, smooth, melt-in-your-mouth texture. The next ingredients are the leavening agents. Leavening agents are the gases that cause the dough to rise. When a dough or batter is baked, it is sets and the holes left by the gas bubbles remain. This is what gives breads, cakes, and other baked products goods to rise and increase its volume. It is a substance used in baking to make a product rise so it becomes light. Classification of leavening agents. First is the chemical leaveners. Chemical leaveners are chemical mixture or compounds that releases gases, usually carbon dioxide. Chemical leaveners are used in quick breads and cakes as well as cookies. The example of chemical leaveners are first the baking soda or also known as sodium bicarbonate. It is a leavening that reacts to acid to produce carbon dioxide. It is a powerful leavener that readily reacts as soon as it comes contact with butter or dough. Next is the baking powder. It is a combination of baking soda and acid salt. And finally, the cream of tartar. It is a tartaric acid and is a fine white crystalline acid salt, which is a byproduct of the winemaking industry. It is used in whipping egg whites to stabilize them. The next classification of leavening agents is the physical leaveners. Air works as a leavener because it expands when heated. It can be incorporated into the product by beating, folding in beaten egg whites, sifting the flour, and creaming the shortening. Another classification of leavening agents is the biological leaveners. It is different from other leavening agents because it is alive. Yeast is a single-celled plant that feeds on starch and sugar. 
Leavening with yeast is a process based on fermentation. The process of converting sugar to alcohol and to carbon dioxide. There are two types of yeast, the dry or granular and the compressed yeast. The dry or granular, it is darker in color than cake yeast. It is purchased in sealed packs or envelopes to ensure freshness. It can be active or instant yeast. Compressed yeast is also called cake yeast. It can be stored for 4 to 5 weeks in a refrigerator. Liquid Ingredients in Baking Liquid ingredients provide moisture to rehydrate and activate the yeast and bring together the flour and any dry ingredients to make the dough. It is also improved the formation of gluten strands during the kneading of dough. Type of liquid ingredients used in baking First is the water. It is the cheapest liquid used in baking. It performs vital role in baking, making ingredients rehydrated. The right amount of water helps dissolve all other ingredients in batter and in dough to form smooth, workable mixture. In that way, water acts as a binding agent for any baked products. Another type of liquid ingredients is the milk and other dairy products. Milk and cream, like water, moisten dough and batters. It gives finer, more velvety grain. It adds flavor. It helps the product stay longer. Milk and cream also create a fuller, moister texture in baked goods and help them brown on the surface. They also contribute to the nutritive value of baked goods. Types of milk used in baking Fresh milk or whole milk Evaporated milk, condensed milk, skimmed milk, powder or dry milk. The minor ingredients in baking. Minor ingredients in baking. Minor ingredients are not as important as the major ingredients in baking, but they are essential in attaining the sensory qualities of baked products. They are used in small quantity, but contribute to the enhancement of flavor and texture of the baked products. These are the ingredients that add distinction and character to baked goods. Example of minor ingredients Flavoring, vanilla, salt, spices like cloves, cinnamon, and nutmeg, wines, coffee, chocolate, and cocoa. A time to remember. This is Mylene Huliganga. Thank you for watching.